Welcome to Goodison Park, the first of the home internationals, technically a home game for Northern Ireland. It's played here, of course, because of the unrest in Ireland. England, the joint holders with Scotland, are the favourites. But the question here now is, can Ireland, the underdogs, do a Sunderland? We shall see, but first, it's the national anthem. But now let's catch up on the two teams for this afternoon. Northern Ireland basically with the side that beat Cyprus in a World Cup qualifying game last Tuesday, except that Pat Jennings' goal for Ian McFall and Pat Rice returns to right back. Terry Neal, their manager, says it's a transitional period for them and their side really has not too much experience at this level. So much then for Northern Ireland. We turn now to the England side and of course, as you'd expect, Sir Alf Ramsey has relied on a strong nucleus of the old guard. Two new caps, David Nish and John Richards and Alan Ball, 28 today, back on his old stamping ground at Goodison Park. But for David Nish, it was an England call from a holiday in Mallorca with the Derby County players, a defender who really likes to come forward as well. And then there's John Richards. What a season it's been for him. 36 goals for Wolverhampton Wanderers, and now at 22, his first England cap. It could indeed be a busy afternoon, though, in the Irish goal for Pat Jennings, footballer of the year, but he seems to like this Merseyside air. Remember, earlier this season, he saved two penalties up the road at Anfield. And then the young Irish hope is Trevor Anderson of Manchester United, scorer of two goals in his first game for his country. That was in that match against Cyprus at Fulham. But now the preliminaries are over and the crowd at Goodison Park now waits for the start. The referee this afternoon at Goodison Park, Clive Thomas from Wales. Just checking with the two Welsh linesmen that he's got here to support him. And it's Ireland then getting this home international championship away. Defending the goal to our left. Green shirts with white shorts. David Clements now. Ireland who caused such a shock by beating England at Wembley last year. Here's young Trevor Anderson. Back for David Clements again. And high behind for the goal kick to England. England have lost only one of their last 15 home internationals. And that was that match against Ireland at Wembley. Peter Shilton, who began to establish himself really into the England side with a fine performance against Scotland at Hampden back in February. Ball bobbling, Alan Ball first to it. Still a lot of evident support for Alan Ball in these parts. Nish getting his first touch as an England player, but the ball going into touch, although there was a foul by number eight, Tommy Jackson, giving England a free kick. And it's with Bobby Moore. Richards and another England throw just deflected off uh, an Irishman it'll be the long throw from Martin Chivers Peters was there at the near post but it was very well read by the Irish and Alan Hunter got there before him in fact uh, Peters was pushing in on uh, the Irishman and so Ireland get a free kick Ireland very much the underdogs here and uh, when you look at their past record only six wins in 79 games against England you can easily see why Morgan making a run for it and getting it Anderson a nice delicate overhead kick but just a little too far Anderson who many say has that looks of George Best about him Richards running for it shadowed by Terry Neal and another free kick. Already three free kicks in the first two minutes of the game. Neil with that one for Ireland. And McFarland climbing very well. Above Anderson and a throw to the Irish. David Craig of Newcastle. 
Again, Anderson was right in there. O'Neill beaten again by McFarlane. This time the ball must have gone off uh, O'Neill last of all because it's a throw to England. Colin Bell back for Story. Chivers coming for this one, hanging nicely in the air. Finding Colin Bell, good ball inside for McFarlane. Swept now for Nish. Forward for Richards. Nicely killed there by John Richards. And the ball almost getting in on that one. And it had to be cut out in the nick of time by that Irish defence. A most promising looking build up there by England. Dave Clements now. Morgan. Pushed in the back though and a free kick given against Peter Storey. The real ball winner in this English defence story. Clements again with a throw. O'Neill. It'll fall for Alan Ball. And now for Chivers. And a foul there. I think it was probably against Terry Neal for snapping a little too uh, ferociously at Martin Chivers as he laid that ball off. Bell, very accurately there for David Nish. And he just as accurately there for Chivers. Back for Peters. Nish. Hamilton attacking him a little too hard from behind. And so another free kick for England. Noticeable that as yet none of the big men from defence have really come forward. McFarland has stayed back for it. Channon made a run towards the near post and now has got to go back and... Uh, the linesman, in fact, doing more instructing than the referee are getting Brian Hamilton back the full ten yards. Nish with the kick, curling on the far post. It's Clements. Bobby Moore. And now with Nish. Ball hung a little bit in the air there. Mick Channon got his head to it. Richards laid back beautifully there for Channon. Now Shannon in a scoring chance. A chip that was a little too uh, high. I say a scoring chance. He was accelerating beautifully, but the Irish were coming back just as fast. There must have been at least three green shirts between him and the goal and Pat Jennings. Shannon, who really revolutionised England attacking play with that marvellous uh, performance of his at Hampden Park. Off Bobby Moore for Ireland's throw. Never any question, it was always the Irish throw. Brian Hamilton with it. Back for Pat Rice. And well stopped by David Nish. Readjusted himself beautifully as uh, Rice tried to go on in the inside. Now with Hamilton again. And a corner to Ireland. So far, the Merseyside crowds, which are known as uh, some of the most vociferous in the land, haven't had very much to get their teeth into. But here's Rice now. That's not at all a bad cross there. And uh, Shelton had to go down from Sammy Morgan. But in fact was pushing in hard on the back of uh, Roy McFarland. And that'll be a free kick and not a goal kick. Free kick to Ireland. Morgan going for it, but McFarlane judging that beautifully. Now with Colin Bell. Story had made the break, kept it in well. Shannon, McFarland, Bell. Oh, a nice pass there with the outside of the boot. Beautifully played there for David Nish by Colin Bell. Ball. Peters. Ball. Played nicely there. Bell, if anything, was a little slow to react to that. But Ball getting it back again, and rather given to him by the Irish. Ball again. This time for Nish.
and Neil and Hunter getting it away to Tommy Jackson but now Shannon Nish towards Chivers but he was kept well out of that scene by Alan Hunter Bell England having very much the more of it at the moment Richards on the far side now Colin Bell inside for Peter Storey Bell again a lot of green shirts are back in England at the moment finding it hard to find a clear way through still with Nish Bell coming away nicely from Jackson there first time ball from Martin Peters curling in again Pat Jennings once more O'Neill stopped very well there by Richards but losing it again as uh, O'Neill came back at him free kick to England Alan Ball's going to take it it'll be a little curler Chivers has made a run towards the near post got the head in well and it's there from Martin Chivers a beautifully taken free kick though by Alan Ball and Chivers in at the near post where it's always most dangerous Jennings half seemed to have it but it just crossed the line and England go ahead with nine minutes gone Chivers the scorer having already amassed 33 goals this season that's 34 for Martin Chivers the England strikers between them Channon Richards and Chivers having Pick 95 this season. That's an awesome prospect now for the Irish defence. Well, looking for a white shirt. Ball, I think, beaten in fact by the rather swirling wind that we've got at Goodison this afternoon story with England's throw Craig with the kick for Ireland hit hard towards Morgan nodding it back but Storey is there to receive it Shannon and Clemens jumping hard at each other really O'Neill going through and uh, Bobby Moore now it's Nish to Chivers ball oh beautiful piece of running there by Alan Ball crossed again and uh, Shannon just keeping it in and he did very well to keep that in there's the dangerous looking cross ball on the far side off the top of his head as they pulled the Irish defence one way then the other and now Rice to come steaming away stopped by Nish ball hadn't come back quickly enough and he's offside England's throw. Jackson to O'Neill. Anderson ahead of him, so too is Morgan and Hamilton of Ipswich on the right here for Ireland. Rice has made one of those galloping overruns and Storey getting up to Nolly behind for the Irish corner Clements is going to take it Terry Neal has come up and rather belatedly Alan Hunter coming up as well number five with Chivers right back to mark him so Clements with the corner McFarlane's head getting there first O'Neill 
and safely clutched from under the bar by Peter Shilton. Story. Neil nodding it down for Hamilton. And Morgan holding off Moore. Ball. Chivers. Clements underneath that one, but knocking it straight down. But before Richards can get there, Craig has. Bell with the throw. And Bell again. Richards to Ball. Just kept in. Now with Bell again. And again the cross. Shannon on the far side. Behind for the goal kick to Ireland. Sammy Morgan really playing with a lot of determination amongst those Irish front runners. He's challenged successfully against Bobby Moore and he really came hammering into Nish there to try and keep the spirit alive for Ireland up front. But now it's Nish and the flair at the moment and the understanding is coming from England. Nish. Peters. And there's a good piece of running and a beautiful ball by Peters to Shannon. Still with Shannon, back for Peters, hit again with the outside of the boot, and so it was swinging all the while. Richards playing mostly on the right-hand side of the pitch. Peters is there, but stopped in the Irish goal by his first teammate, Pat Jennings. Martin Peters. Bell with England's throw, ball. And now it's Ireland's throw. Just about a quarter of an hour gone, still Northern Ireland nil, England one. Score of Martin Chivers. O'Neill to Clements. Bit of pushing and shoving there between uh, O'Neill and Bell. Craig, Anderson trying a very ambitious overhead, and Shilton, again, the aggression of Morgan, really bouncing off Peter Shilton, though. Ball rather got in Shannon's way there. Moore, just hitting the top of his head and going behind for McFarlane. Terry Neal, chased by Chivers, and back to Jennings. Tremendous high up and under there from uh, Pat Jennings, but Shilton gathered it from one goalkeeper to the other, first bounce. David Nish for England. McFarland. And Moore. Peters, Nish, Shannon. Very shadowed very well by the number five, Alan Hunter there, keeping close to Shannon, he knows he must. Another long throw from Martin Chivers. Shannon's got into the centre there, Ball and Richards are waiting as well. So too is Martin Peters, and it's Peters who gets it. The flick that didn't come off. Jackson in a bit of trouble there, but running his way out of it. But then it's Peters again taking up the loose one for England. Moore and Chivers is offside. A rather questioning glance. Is it me, he says. And the linesman saying most certainly it is. Terry Neal. McFarlane. And a throw to Ireland.
Anderson, oh, he got in beautifully there. That's a good looking cross as well, and Morgan was just a foot or so away from getting a right boot in there that would have given Shildon very little chance, but a beautiful piece of play by Trevor Anderson. Showing really so much flair as he came across there and uh, very nearly a chance for Ireland. Chivers. Good ball there to Alan Ball. Oh, and a marvellous save by Jennings from Alan Ball. Chivers, a superb pass to Alan Ball, and he hit it beautifully on the run. No one could ask more, except that those massive hands of Jennings were there again. Jackson. Morgan. Hamilton. Good challenge there by Bobby Moore. Chivers, the game really beginning to wake up a little bit now. Anderson, who's shown some good touches. But that wasn't one from Jackson, and now England with ball to Shannon. Played off for David Nish. Richards hoping to get there. Morgan. Jackson to Clements. And now Anderson. McFarlane's header. Hamilton to Clements. And there's Anderson now in a bit of space for Northern Ireland. And hit beautifully there first time. Well, he's been a bit of a revelation already as uh, Trevor Anderson. Chivers to Bell. Ball, and our story, Bell, no, just a shade too far ahead for Alan Ball, from Colin Bell, already covering a lot of ground in the middle of the field, and so too is Alan Ball, who looks the sprightliest of the uh, England midfield players at the moment. Bobby Moore to Nish. Shannon. He's got Peters outside him. Nish inside. Played towards Chivers, and Chivers trying to get it back to him, but uh, Hamilton intervening for Ireland. Alan Hunter. Rice. And now Terry Neal. Oh, and he might be getting himself into trouble. Chivers has got the better of him, and now has laid it off for Richards. Played on for Bell. And Clements defending well for Ireland, getting it away towards Morgan. Ball to Storey. To Moore, with Nish free away on the left for him. Oh, they left it to each other, and Ireland almost got in there with Hamilton. Brian Hamilton now. O'Neill. Jackson. That's the drive there, and again, Morgan was almost there, and he's given a penalty for an elbowing by Storey on Morgan. Now we shall see it. It almost got there for Morgan for a clean shot in any case. Referee Clive Thomas said that Storey unfairly impeded the Irishman. And here is a golden opportunity now with David Clements to score the equaliser for Northern Ireland. He's not quite happy with the way the ball is placed. The wind, in fact, fractionally moved it. It adds to the tension as the crowd whistle around Dave Clements. Clements v Shilton. And Ireland have equalised. 1-1. One, one. An unerring accuracy there from Dave Clements. Not the easiest of penalty shots. But he hit it straight into the corner, giving him no room for error. But there really was no error there. And it's 1-1. One, one. 
Well, that looked a very harsh penalty decision. But referee Clive Thomas was right there. And most certainly now that opens the game right up once more. 1-1. O'Neill. Well, it certainly was the encouragement that Ireland badly needed. And there's young Trevor Anderson again. And he's found Pat Rice. Inside David Nish. And O'Neill tried to nudge it back for an Irish uh, compatriot coming in fast. And now England take it up with McFarlane. Bell. Ball. Now Clements. Free kick to Ireland. Terry Neal taking the kick. Good header away by Nish. Hunter first on the scene. More for England. Peters. Chivers. Eliasman was flagging for offside against uh, John Richards, but uh, referee Clive Thomas said play on with Ireland in possession. Craig to Jackson. Terry Neal. A little more composure about Ireland now. And there's Anderson getting in behind the defence. And Shilton needed to be out so quickly. And really, Anderson has electrified this game for Ireland with some magnificent touches. And he couldn't quite get a foot to that one. But he really outwitted the whole of that English defence. Now it's with Shannon. Still with Shannon. Neil there, getting it away into touch. Chivers following it out, so it'll be a long throw. Nish to Shannon. Now Hamilton. Moore in first, and an offside against uh, Shannon, free kick to Ireland. Morgan v Moore, and behind them is O'Neill and McFarlane. Peters coming in as well, playing it back to the safety of uh, Shilton. Shannon's header, Hunter to his uh, skipper and manager, Terry Neal. Story. Hamilton's header. Moore. Nish. Took it on his chest. Hamilton fighting back at him, but there's the ball for John Richards. First time for Martin Peters. Again hit with the outside of the boot, curling all the way, but Hunter watched it like a hawk. Peters to Moore. And offside given against Martin Peters. Long towards Sammy Morgan. McFarland again under pressure but gets the head and Nish gets the boot. Clements to Jackson. Good play by Dave Clements. Bell nudging him in the back. Free kick. 
and England at the moment have lost their way. Early on they looked to have more flair and understanding, which is what you would expect from a side that has played together so long. But as the Irish brought together hastily, who tried to piece things together, there's the free kick, and Schulter needs to get the fist away. But he was uh, unfairly challenged by Morgan, and so it'll be a free kick to England. Clement's free kick, and in fact it was uh, O'Neill who got in there with the head, and safety first for Shilton. In fact, it wasn't an intentional uh, challenge, it looked by Morgan. Bell's header, and a good one. Ball going in, the feet were high that time by Jackson on ball. Jackson very vigorous and aggressive as well, trying to nullify the work of Alan Ball in the middle of the field. Moore with the free kick for England. Bell. And it was Hunter who got that away, as far as Richards, and he couldn't quite get it. And now Hamilton taking it up for Ireland. Anderson outside him. Uh, stopped by Nish. Richards. First time ball for Shannon, but again, Craig was there. And the free kick given to Ireland. I don't really think anyone can argue much about that because uh, Shannon, it might not have been deliberate, but he quite definitely caught David Craig as he was about to uh, come and intercept. Again, that high ball. And again, McFarlane was put under pressure. Really is a very impressive player at the moment, this number, number nine, Sammy Morgan. Shannon, as ball was flattened. Peters to Bell. Having trouble fighting off O'Neill, but does so Bell. And Jennings was in trouble, and Rice had to hook it away. Pat Jennings really was in trouble with that cross shot from uh, Colin Bell. He hit it low along the ground, scudding all the way. In fact, Pat was a little slow to get down to it, and Rice had to come to his rescue. And so it's a corner then to England. Colin Bell, having made the shot that won it. Marty Peters waiting there. And Jennings, a good catch. Craig then for Ireland. Shivers ducking in to try and get the header in first, but it's O'Neill for Ireland to Brian Hamilton. The deflection might come to Anderson, and he's uh, full of tricks, this little fella. Oh, and he almost got away past Nish, but that was a good uh, defensive header by David Nish. And some pushing there by Bell on Clements. It had to be a free kick. So a free kick to Ireland. And as uh, Bell goes in, you really can't dispute it. So here's Ireland then with a free kick. Played for Rice. Will he let one go first time? Goal kick. Pat Rice smiling away. I'm wondering if you heard someone behind me in the crowd who said you should have been at Wembley in the Rugby League final with kicking like that this afternoon. Peter's header. Hunter. Nish. Running into trouble, really, there. A combination of Rice and Hamilton, always likely to beat David Nish in that rather confined circumstance. McFarlane coming across first.
Peters. For Nish. Out of play, Ireland's throw. Peters in first to Chivers, nicely touched back there for Richards. And now for Ball. Bell has gone streaking on ahead and here's Story. Crossed by Story towards Shannon, but Craig again there for Ireland. And now Hamilton. Stopped by Alan Ball. Peters. And now Jackson. Challenged by Ball. Play on, says the referee, and it goes through now for Shannon. And a goal kick. Five minutes to go to half-time. England starting brightly, but finishing this first half in a rather disjointed and disappointing fashion. And standing at 1-1 against Northern Ireland. Chivers for England, and Clements with a penalty for Northern Ireland. Anderson to Clements Jackson shrugged off Alan Ball and McFarland there with a the header away and with that one too Colin Bell Story Bell. Oh, what a strange ball for Bell, straight to Anderson, one against one for the moment, but England coming back in strength, still with Anderson, and still with Anderson as he finds O'Neill. And he's against the crossbar! But in fact, it wouldn't have counted, there was an infringement, but beautiful skills. And O'Neill hitting it well, Shilton off his line against the top of the crossbar but there was an infringement just inside that England penalty area and now it's Nish Richards Moore Nish Peters to Shannon He's gone past Hamilton, a dink, a little chip there, and Bell on the far side. Beautiful play by Shannon in the first place, and it was uh, Chivers, in fact, who couldn't quite get the positive header to it, going past Hamilton. What a nice little chip there. Chivers couldn't make any impact, and Bell really quite lost his head, and a chance was gone. Peters, back to Shilton. More for England. Chivers versus Neil up there. Chivers now for Nish. That'll still go to Richards on the far side. Oh, and he tried to turn it in for Bell, and he was a little too casual about it. Story, Craig, Clements. As the whistle goes for half-time, and it's got to be a disappointing first half for England with only four shots really on target. One of them was from Martin Chivers that put England ahead after nine minutes. But then Ireland scored the equaliser from the penalty spot, the scorer Dave Clements. Disappointing so far for England, encouraging for Ireland, We'll bring you the second half in just a couple of minutes with the half-time score at Goodison Park. Northern Ireland 1, England 1.
round of applause as we welcome you back for Pat Jennings as he goes to the uh, other end of the field, getting a warm reception from the Goodison Park crowd as Footballer of the Year, no doubt, as we now come into the second half. A very interesting situation at 1-1, and England now defending the goal to our left. And straight away, a touch in this second half for Pat Jennings. Jackson and Clements quickest to react and more reacting just a little quicker a little more solidly than Trevor Anderson there but now it's with O'Neill for Ireland Nish in fact the ball came off the head of Sammy Morgan so it'll be a goal kick to England nothing very much in that opening uh, half to raise high hopes about the World Cup match about Poland uh, that's coming up Jackson and ball falling to the ground there and Ireland getting a free kick Tommy Jackson really aggressive former Everton player of course like Alan Ball tough stocky little characters both of them uh, contesting the middle of the field Rice then with the free kick for Ireland. Morgan again backing into McFarlane, making life very difficult for the England number five. Peters just getting up there. Ball, but that's Clements there, able to put it back again. And Ball must have followed through, and Ball is going to be booked. Well, there must have been a foul by Alan Ball as he came towards Clements. I think probably it comes now. That is what uh, Mr. Thomas construed as an over-the-top challenge by Alan Ball on Dave Clements, and that is why he's taken his name. <laughs> Hamilton with the free kick. Hunter beaten in fact by the wind and Peters was going in hard so too was Richards and now it's with Craig ball losing control and it's O'Neill Morgan ahead of him still with Morgan going past one challenge after another and now Hamilton away on the right for Ireland blocked by Bell and cleared by Bell beautifully there to John Richards Rice coming back hard though still with Richards but he ran rather aimlessly into trouble there Hamilton O'Neill and Jackson Morgan Hamilton Hamilton again and Bell getting it away once more to Richards might be tempting fate, but if you really had to put money on who's going to score the next goal, you would have to give a shade of odds to Ireland at the moment. But here's Shannon. Ball to Story. Ball again. And Hamilton gets that one away for Ireland. Morgan. Now it's O'Neill. Three English defenders around him. Moore is closest and Moore is the man who makes the challenge that matters. Ten minutes into the second half now and still 1-1. Clements. And a goal kick. Shannon's header, Chivers, but again Jackson is there, ball, story, ball again, story. And that's play for Peters to make one of those runs from the middle of the field. He took a nudge in the back from Pat Rice there as he ran. 
but that was one of the characteristic runs of Martin Peters floating in on the blind side of defenders England's throw now on the far side Martin Chivers with another long one Peters trying to get in on this one and in fact lifted himself higher than anybody but Ireland with Hamilton and now with Anderson beaten by Chivers and now McFarland oh good play there by Richards and it leaves it free for Bell and a good save by Pat Jennings and now Chivers coming in and Jennings again Richards and Bell looked as though they could almost go through and pick their spot good play there by Richards nodding it down Bell taking it up and one of the great saves again by Jennings, a goalkeeper so foot conscious. Story with England's throw. Shannon. He's had few opportunities to shine this afternoon as he did at Hamden Park, but there's Ball, a good cross, and again Jennings leaping together. Rice. Clements. Good play there by Dave Clements. The left-footed shot neither the power nor really the direction and England's goal kick always a left-footed player and a strong left-footed player Dave Clements but not really a shot there to worry uh, Peter Shilton ball for England but nobody is there other than Pat Rice for Ireland and another England attack breaks down Bell Shannon Jackson O'Neill and Morgan. Good, delicate play there by the Irish. Anderson going past Nish. Still Anderson. Beautifully struck shot. Well, he's having quite an afternoon, Trevor Anderson. Look at those lovely skills. Really the legs of a Dugan and the football brain of a best as he goes past that English defence in a tremendous shot, just a shade too high. Certainly this young man, Trevor Anderson, is going to open a lot of eyes for Ireland and for Manchester United over the next few years. Nish for England. Chivers. And again, the much more positive play of the Irish defence beating England in attack. But here's Nish again. Richards away alone on the left. And no bother at all for Pat Jennings. With half an hour to go, still 1-1. Hunter, McFarlane, Peters, Richards and Ball. Rice, but now it's with Chivers. Played nicely there by Chivers for John Richards. And now it's with Alan Ball. Bell trying a one-two back with Ball. Chivers! Oh, and a fine save by Jennings! But a real genuine build-up by England as well. And there haven't been many of those. Ball at the outset. A nice touch by Bell. A nice touch by Ball and a shot on the volley by Chivers, superbly pulled down by Jennings.
story. McFarlane. Well, that might well give England a bit of encouragement. It's their best bit of build-up for quite some time. Nish. Running a little more aggressively now. This Irish defence with Shannon. Can he get behind Craig? He can beautifully. Ball couldn't quite get there. And in fact, he missed the opportunity that was presented for Chivers. There's ball again. And that's just wide. Really in there where the fight was thickest, Alan Ball. Determined to score on his birthday. Good play here by Shannon. Got in nicely behind the fullback. A delicate little chip. And in fact, you'll see now, if Ball hadn't just got ahead to it, Chivers was beautifully placed behind him. Free kick to England. Chivers on the far side, beaten in the air by Pat Rice. Morgan and Ball shunting into each other. Free kick to England. Moore with the free kick, Richards with a back header, Bell going in as well, and Terry Neal for Ireland. Nish for England. Hunter's header away. As we come to the last quarter of now, a little surprising that uh, England haven't called at least on one substitute when they've got the likes of Summerby and Keegan there, who are both capable of coming along and attacking defences and maybe unsettling them. But there's a cross by Nish, and Shannon's in first, a free header, and a bad miss there by the England number eight. Took up a superb position, and he really got quite behind that Irish defence for what was a free header. But just look at that. And Shannon certainly wouldn't be happy with it. We now have ten minutes left as McFarland again gets up above Morgan. Hamilton for Ireland. Being harassed by Bell. Anderson. O'Neill. Nice touch there by Ireland. For Dave Clements on one of those predominantly left-footed runs and crosses. But that's a way behind with apologies to his teammates. And so it's a goal kick for England. Nish. Richards. Chivers. Nish has gone on the outside for Chivers, but it's still with Martin Chivers and now with Nish. And the cross, and there's a misunderstanding there between Neil and Jennings, which they rectified just in time after Nish had made a good run. It certainly was a very good uh, ball there by Chivers into the path of David Nish. And you see Neil and Jennings very nearly getting in each other's way. Moore now back to Shilton. McFarlane v Morgan. McFarlane winning that one. Neil. O'Neill. It'll be England's throw. Story then with the throw for England. Bell to Moore, saying to Richards, please come a little closer and take the pass, and uh, instead he gives it to Nish. There's Richards again, a gliding header, and it'll come through to Chivers, is this it? It must be it for England, Chivers 2-1, his second goal, and Ireland, having defended so bravely for so long, they lost the ball to Chivers, and Chivers kept his head superbly as Jennings came out spreading himself round his Tottenham teammate and then the whole of the goal to aim at. 
so with seven minutes to go England have jerked themselves into scoring life and Martin Chivers puts them 2-1 ahead and that within about five minutes of some slow hand clapping and some great disappointment shown here by the Everton crowd at England's performance this afternoon which has lacked so many things but at the moment has the winning touch it's Shannon now challenging Neil attacking him as England attackers should have done for much longer in this game and winning a corner ball to take it only England's third corner and Shannon with a header saved very well by Pat Jennings and he made it look so easy a good accurate corner Shannon in fact jumping in ahead of that defender which was bad defense and look at Pat Jennings all the time in the world Shivers again Shannon in fact on this side of the field was offside but not interfering with play pushing by Chivers free kick to Northern Ireland Last five minutes of the game now. Morgan leaving it for Hamilton. McFarland to Bell. Neil. Story above Anderson. Bell. And Shannon beaten by Craig. Anderson again. It's uncanny how that Anderson in a green shirt looks so like George Best. There's Anderson again. Oh, a lovely touch off there by him to O'Neill. And he couldn't quite get the return, but it's with O'Neill again. And now Hunter coming in first for Ireland. Morgan being challenged all the while by McFarlane. McFarlane getting some of his own back for some of the really aggressive challenging that Morgan has done on him. Richards on the far side, a quiet first international for him. Peters, Moore, Nish. Played for Story. Bell. Gaining the players, lining up for the cross. Shannon towards the near post. Bell again with time to cross once more. This time to Martin Peters. A chance for Peters. Oh, and another superb save by Pat Jennings. It's a corner then for England. And Bell put it in. Chivers, in fact, or rather Peters took it so well. And look at that, another magnificent save by Jennings. Corner again for England. Alan Ball with it, curling in once more, and again it's the fist of Jennings, but in fact it, he knocked it straight at Hunter and behind, so it's another corner. Played a little wider this time. And Jennings once more goes this time down, this time from John Richards. Moore going to that one, determined to get it. Hunter, an overhead. Moore nicely trapped on his chest. And a good pass by him to Richards. Peters. Nish. Peters. And Shannon is there again, but the uh, 
Wind beat him there, curling that ball away from him after he'd really positioned himself so well. O'Neill. Two minutes to go. And England leading by two goals to one. Jackson. Even Craig has gone up on the far side. Jackson hammering it against that white wall. It'll come now for O'Neill. Will he get a shot in? And now for Anderson. Is this the moment for Anderson? Stopped by Bobby Moore. Moore sent superbly that Anderson was there on the point of uh, scoring an equaliser. And that was a lovely ball from O'Neill. Anderson, and now just look at the ground Moore covers as Anderson prepares to shoot. But it's a corner for Ireland. It'll come for Rice. Jackson. Clements. Again, the left foot cross. Bobby Moore there. Hit it away with his shoulder, in fact. And now Shannon up. It basically, at the moment, is one against one as he attacks Hunter. And Hunter doing very well there to stop the number eight of England in full flight. Because uh, Ireland had pumped a few men forward. England's throw. Richards turning it in for Peters. And now for Story. Bell. Shannon. Trying to get a shot on the turn there. Still with Mick Shannon. The angle is very sharp and finally blotted out by Terry Neal. And this really is almost the last assault for Ireland. And it's stopped by Bell. Clements, long and high towards Morgan, but Bobby Moore beat him in the air. And a free kick to England. Clements, the way England started this game in the first quarter of an hour, you would have thought that Ireland were really in for a hammering after England had scored that first goal, but Ireland have held them so well. England, if anything, just a little lucky to be leading 2-1, but there's Chivers now with a shot that bounces off Craig. O'Neill. Rice to Hunter. And now it's with uh, Clements. Jackson losing it to England. And Bell finding Richards. He's got Shannon up with him as well and Chivers away on the right. The three England strikers are all up. Here's Chivers. Played again towards Richards and the Irish defence getting themselves in a bit of a muddle. Pat Rice very coolly getting him out of it. And so too was Craig. But now he only gives it to Chivers. And before Chivers can do anything with it, the game is over and England have won both England goals from Martin Chivers the second one close to the end when it looked as though Ireland might get a draw the Irish goal Dave Clements from the penalty spot but really for 80% of the time an abject and most disappointing performance by England that had the Goodison crowd for some time booing them for some time slow hand clapping them but now we leave Goodison Park and we assess the match as a whole, both England's performance and Ireland's performance with the ITV panel, so it's back to Jimmy Hill. Well, good evening. We've got our lovely panel over there waiting to get to grips with that game, but before that, we go to uh, Goodison Park after the game where Brian Moore talked to Alf Ramsey. I did at the performance. Uh, it was an untidy match. I thought we played extremely well for 25 minutes. We'd, everything seemed to go wrong after the penalty was given against us. Uh, I think, I think they've got a right to be disappointed. After all, it was an international match. It wasn't a particularly good one. Uh, and as I've said previously, or just now, that our performance did deteriorate considerably after the penalty. And uh, we were unable to regain our touch, understanding, confidence, everything. Why do you think it went wrong after the penalty? I don't know. I think they were terribly disappointed. I think the players are convinced, were convinced, uh, that, that it was no penalty. Uh, mm. And uh, if it was a penalty, it was a very harsh decision. Mm. Uh, from your seat in the stand, would you agree with them? 
Uh, well, that, it's not for me to agree or disagree with the referee. It was a penalty against the England side. I think probably uh, this is something we, we n not necessarily have to live with. It's something that, that, that uh, we must be able to overcome. Disappointments come uh, at any stage or at any time uh, during a match. Mm. And, and it is important that these are international players and are able to overcome this. Yeah go along with those sentiments too, but I'm not at all sure the panel are going to go along with what the England team thought about that penalty kick. They've got other ideas, I know, but let's have a look at it now and see what we thought, because I think that brings up other issues that uh, are relevant in many more matches than this international match. You can see now there, as the ball comes into the penalty area, Sammy Morgan going for it, and the push of Peter Storey. Now the first question I'm going to put to the panel in a moment, we're going to see, first of all, David Clements take one of the best penalties under pressure I've seen taken for a long while. Not an easy moment, he's got loads of power in that left foot and he keeps it low and hard and no goalkeeper in the world could save that particular penalty kick. But the, the issue that came out of that, Malcolm Allison, first of all, was it a penalty? Well, uh, it's, it's a penalty because uh, anywhere else in the park, you know, the referee would have given a free kick. And this is the thing that happens very, very often in, uh, in football. You see obstruction, you see people push, you see people pull, you see people tripped in the penalty area. But because it's in the penalty, penalty area, they don't give a penalty. But anywhere else in the park, they would give it. And so there's, there's no reason why that shouldn't have been a penalty. Derek, was that a push? Well, it looked like it, um, watching the film two or three times, Jim, it looked like a push on uh, Sammy Morgan. Sammy Morgan's a very strong type um, front runner, and uh, he definitely went down. I don't think that Sammy Morgan has really got the uh, intellect upstairs really to con or play yeah. up into the referee. Well, it was a situation think, you know, where he could have played the ball, wouldn't it? He yes, could have definitely played the ball. It was definitely it. a penalty. Peter Story made no attempt <clears> to play the ball, but at the same time, for Alf to make the excuse that England didn't play all that well because of that mm. penalty kick, ridiculous. No, he didn't, but he said international players should overcome that kind of setback. That's but, what he uh, said. He said they should be, at the same time, he's still making the excuse that they didn't play all that well. No, he said it knocked him off their stride, but the, an international it, team should overcome that kind of setback. Was that right, Jackie? Oh, yeah, yeah. They should have a comment, but you know. What, what about this Peter Story looked the most surprised man in the world when the penalty was given. Because Peter Story must do that almost every game he plays. I think most fullbacks do. Well, there was a situation that they let him away with it. Okay. Alan Ball, for instance, at the other end, was blatantly pushed in the back when he was ready to head a ball. How many, he let, times, he didn't give it. how many times in the course of a season do you push a forward in, off the ball in a situation something like that in the penalty area and get away with it? Happens once every. I time. don't do it well, at all. Take... I don't do it at oh, all. I know you don't. Know you don't. Be honest. Don't do it Be honest. How no. many times do you push? Well, let's a put it like the other way. way. How many people? Times do people push? Uh, for instance, over the years I've played, push me in the box, and then I get penalised for them pushing. Yeah. But nearly always the referees because referees, referees take... basically are cowards in this situation, and they just will not give what the, the real decision calls for, which in most cases is a penalty kick. But this referee did give that decision. Yeah, but he today. didn't give the one when Bawley was pushed at the other end. Yes, yeah. but I think we're only talking about this yeah. individual incident here. I do believe, really, that it was a foul. Peter's story, Sammy Morgan had an opportunity, if the ball had been played off to him, took it round and maybe knocked him in the back end. I thought, really, on the what I watched, I don't, there, I still that was a definitely penalty. I keep going on about the penalty, but I don't think that's the excuse for England playing. It isn't an excuse, Paddy. Played the reason well I'm keeping on did. about it is a simple one, and I want to ask Malcolm this. The issue that defenders, the referee in circumstances like this, always takes tends to take the side of the defender because if he doesn't it's a penalty now is it a good thing for football if we want to see skill and attacking play that the referee takes the side of the defender isn't it better the referee does what this one did today uh, yes much better for the game I mean uh, the more goals we see the more situations created in the penalty box I mean great players want the ball played into them in the penalty box you know and people foul them and obstruct them in the penalty box you know then they're entitled to an indirect free kick or, or a penalty and uh, see, the more we get, the more we get of this, the more we get of this, you know, the more we, the more excitement it brings to the game. Mm. Mm. I mean, this is this is what the competition, in the game is all about, playing in the penalty box. Mm. And uh, this was a good ball, and Morgan made a good run for it, you know. And Story knew he was struggling, and he, he obstructed the guy or he uh, pushed him in the back, yeah. and it was a penalty. Mm. But plus the fact really is that... Um, I mean, how many times have you been fouled this, this time, Derek, in the back, you know? Well, what do you lose on the swing sometimes again on the round? Yeah, but, yeah, but you can't, you can't possibly game because you're in the opposing penalty box. You've the issue straight away as well, Malcolm, because you said the referee should give a, either a penalty or an indirect free kick inside the box. If it's a foul, it's a penalty. Well, well I mean, I mean I'm, I'm talking about obstruction. Or, I mean, so often in the penalty well, box of obstruction, you know, they don't give it because it's a free kick in the penalty box. Anywhere else in the park, they give it. 
Yeah. But let's, let's, give, let's, let's give credit to the referee there. Yeah. I mean, the referee is the boss out there, and he thought, in his opinion, it was a penalty kick. Well, and, but one thing that you never saw any England players actually run to the referee and, and challenge the decision, which is a very important uh, factor yeah. in the uh, issue. All right, I think we're going to say full marks to referee Clive Thomas for a brave and courageous decision. But now, what about Martin Chivers? Uh, two goals today, one of his best performances, man? Yeah, well, he never plays well against Alan Hunter. Alan Hunter is a very good centre-half and gives him... You know, a very hard time, but uh, today Martin was really on the ball. Here's the first goal, the chip's this, coming this up. This is a great goal. Right in, the, right in the near post, you know, he come and he beat everybody to the ball. Look at it again from behind now, I mean, it was a great goal, he ran well, but of course, uh, we must say that Pat Jennings, and this is football, one moment, football of the year, the next moment, there he is in an international, letting the ball slip through his hands, as this one goes through, I think... Uh, that's something that we all know in football, that you can yeah. be on top of the world. Yeah, this, this is a shot we never saw, Jim, before, you know, and it looks a bad goal there. Yeah. It looks a bad goal, and, and uh, you know, Pat looked like he could have caught it or could have got his hands to it and knocked it out. Second one coming up now, beautifully taken. Yeah, that's... Beautiful goal. That's a great well ball, that's a great Challenged ball. Challenged the early fighting. Yeah. This is where his strength and composure tells here. He beats Jennings on the floor. Jennings maybe should have stood up and stayed there. You know, he just takes his time, puts him in the back of the net. If Jennings had stayed, maybe Terry Neal would have caused him some bother, you know. But it was a good goal. Great goal. Um, other England performances. Derek? Well, I'd just like to have a brief word on Martin Chivers. I've always said to Martin Chivers, he's got the equipment to be probably the best front runner, I would say, in Europe. Mm. If he had a little bit more aggression, he showed it today, and I thought that was one of his most convincing performances. And watching the match this afternoon, I was with a Tottenham supporter, and he said he's watched all Tottenham's matches this season. That was undoubtedly his best performance of the season, so he's, he's held it for a big one. Paddy, a lot of people say about Martin Chivers that he doesn't really fulfil his potential and that maybe he's a lazy player, he's got lots of talent, but he doesn't do this. Uh, do you think maybe you saw the danger signal today and thought, uh, I've got to really go, or self will have me I out? think you always find with big fellas that they never use the ability that God's given them. They're always afraid to use their weight at their height. And that's the only thing that's always been, that's ever been wrong with Martin Chivers. He's done everything else except mm. that. He's never used his weight at his height. Mm. I, think he, I think he responds to the atmosphere, Martin Chivers. Yeah. You know, I mean, when I've seen him, if the crowd starts chanting Chivers and he starts going, he always scores a goal, and then he really buzzes, you know. Of course and Jack, Jack will tell you now that he he's a very difficult guy to play against. He yeah. came into the game late, at a time when the rest of the England players weren't doing it. Mm. Mm. You know, the, last, the second half of the game, I thought Martin Chivers was magic. He was getting on balls, he was knocking them off, he was yeah. making runs. And uh, I thought him with the other lad, Shannon. 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 You know, Channon worked well with Chivers today because Channon was always making these positive runs through and he was getting balls played in front of him. Yeah. They didn't come off for Mike Shannon today, but, you know, the, the sort of runs he makes, we've talked yeah. about earlier, and, and these are going to pay off for England. Yeah. The strong run I threw like this with the acceleration he's going to be good. I think good. That the three of them don't really work together. I, don't, I think that John Richards and, and Chivers and Shannon don't really work together. Yeah. I mean, was Richards a bit unlucky uh, today, would you say, in the role that he was asked to I play? don't think it suits him at all. I don't, I, mean, I, don't know, I don't know if he was asked to play that role, Malcolm. I think with Martin Chivers and Mick Channon having played in England side before, their character may have got above him and he just Let's sort of Let's look at one moment back. when I thought Richards did very well. He was playing back in a position that he doesn't normally take up for, for Wolves, probably trying to find space, but here he might have taken a man on, but he opens up this play quite well, a constructive move there, which led to one of the most exciting moves of the match. Well, this was match. The a lovely ball back from Colin yeah. Bell there. Ball he plays it on. Chivers takes it down, and that was the moment when Pat Jennings really did. But that's a, that's a negative. That's a negative thing from from Richards. You know, Richards is a, a fellow who strikes at the defence and runs through the defence and uh, really causes them problems, turning quick in the box. But he was never able to get in the box. You know, I mean, Chivers is in there and Shannon was in there, and he was having to play in a situation which was very foreign to him today, and it doesn't suit him at yeah. all. And plus the fact uh, is that it must it must stress really that making your debut really and playing on a position. I've never seen John Richards actually floating about as much as he did this afternoon yeah. and also that John Rich is really as a, as a front man, as a target man really, it should be hit all the time and be fed with a lot of things and he didn't really actually play in his natural role today and I only hope really that he's given consideration for another game because he shouldn't be judged on this afternoon. All right, let's leave England for a moment and go to Ireland, Northern Ireland, the brave performance, unlucky to get nothing out of it. Jackie Charlton, the players that impressed you? Well, Pat Jennings didn't today. I thought <laughs> Pat dropped more balls today than I've ever seen him. But, uh, I like the young, the young lad to play up front. This We've got a couple Anderson. of that here. Anderson, yeah, Trevor it, Anderson did exceptionally well. To say this I don't man, think he's a regular with Manchester United, is he? He's not, no. That's Martin O'Neill there with a fair, a fair shot. That combination were the two that stood out to me, Trevor Anderson and Martin O'Neill. We pick up just some flashes of them now. There's Hamilton on the ball. 
And we see here how Anderson beats Bobby Moore beautifully and puts a beautiful hard and low. That's a dangerous ball going right across the target area there, in really inviting being put in the net. And finally, the, uh, from this kick, again, just near the end of the game, as Tommy Jackson shoots. And I thought O'Neill here showed real class. He comes back with the ball, spots his target, which is Anderson. Anderson gets it down. He beats one man, but of all people, again, it's Bobby Moore who reads it, comes from nowhere, and stops that chance. A good performance, Jackie, from those A good two performance players? from them too, yeah. I thought... Uh, the lad wouldn't have got the ball in the last instance. It, you know, it was run away on his wrong foot, yeah. and I think Bobby Moore had read him well. But uh, O'Neill, I thought, played great as well. You know, he, he caused a lot of trouble, especially balls yeah. gone up to uh, the centre half. Sonny Morgan? No, uh, English centre half. My father. My father. My father. My father. We I lost the name him, for yeah. a minute. Yeah. But he, he put him under a lot of pressure. He never allowed him to settle on a ball in the air. He didn't know his England centre half since he left. The last three international matches that Ireland's played in, Martin and Neil has been the most talented and no most What about David Clements it's for his energy for Ireland today throughout that match? David oh, Jim, since you, since you signed him, he did well. <laughs> <laughs> no, Dave no, he worked hard. He worked hard. Little Tommy Jackson worked extremely hard in midfield as well. He competed off a well with Ireland ball. And I thought that David Craig at left fullback had another very good game. He was outstanding on the game on Tuesday. And David Clements has been a very underrated player for years and years, Jim. But I didn't, I didn't hold really... On a minute, hold on a minute. There was another match played today. Of course uh, there was. Scotland <laughs> were playing two today. And the score of that match, in case you haven't heard, Scotland 2, Wales nil. There it is. And George Graham, obviously benefiting from uh, Paddy... Creeran's coaching got the two goals for Scotland today. Paddy, now today you and Derek were going on about Willie Ormond. You had an argument. One of you thought that, uh, well, you thought that Willie Ormond shouldn't have broken up the team, and Derek thought that it was in, he was entitled to pick what team he wanted. Now, what do you say about the result? You haven't seen. The match. Of course, the result's a good result. The best, the best. I mean, we're not here to sort of stop Scotland getting to the World Cup finals. We want them to get there, and as many players as he can get, the better. But at the same time, the nucleus, don't be a politician, the nucleus Paddy, of the players the question, that was there would have beat Wales anyway. But don't evade the question, Paddy. You criticised Willie Ormond for his team selection this I morning. Never you and Tommy Doherty. No. Now, you did at lunchtime. And no, that's I didn't it. Now, the He's got to because he works for Tommy Doherty. <laughs> <laughs> what are you on that's the fact. Here we have Willie, Keep him at it. Willie Ormond actually picked a team this morning that was criticised in this morning's paper by Manchester United manager, who had got no right to criticise Willie Ormond because Willie Ormond, I, don't, I haven't read about criticising the poor form Derek, of Manchester you know, United. A different no, I am not at all. All the doc said about Willie Ormond was that he didn't think Willie Ormond should have broke up the nucleus of a team that was there for 15 months that had practically got them to the World Cup. Well, as you realise, as you realise, yes, ladies and that gentlemen, that argument, if you'll be quiet, is going to go on all night. I think Scotland night. should have won today. Uh, <laughs> in marvellous form. I'm going to have to listen to it. You're not. But just let me remind you of Scotland versus Ireland next Wednesday at 10.30 on ITV. And then the big one on Saturday, live in World of Sport from Wembley, England versus Scotland, the climax to the whole tournament. We'll see you then.